ओके सो सो दिस टूडेज लेक्चर इज ऑन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ओके सो टिल इन टिल द लास्ट लेक्चर वी वेर डीलिंग विद द बेसिकली इलेक्ट्रिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एंड इन द नेक्स्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स वील गो इन टू इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ओके सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू सो इन दी अर्लियर लेक्चर्स दे वी हैड बेसिकली यूज ओनली पैसिव एलिमेंट्स सो द इलेक्ट्रिकल एलिमेंट्स इन द सर्किट कंसिस्ट ऑफ आई द रजिस्टर्स इंडक्टर्स एंड इन अ फ्यू केसेस कॉम्पनसेटरी फॉर कॉम्पनसेटरी सर्किट वी हैड कैपेसिटर्स इन दिस केस सो दे हैव ऑल पैसिव एलिमेंट्स एंड in electronic instrumentation in in addition to passive elements we also use semiconductive devices and or else some of those components are active components okay and uh, typically these electronic instruments are used uh, more more so in the measurement of non electrical quantities and uh, of course they are indirect measurements because you you are you will be using them as part of transducers okay so you have a non electrical measurement that is converted to an electrical measurement okay using electronic uh, circuits and in addition you can also use the electronic instrumentation to measure electron electric electrical quantities also this again may be direct or indirect so in this lecture we will see a very few examples of electronic instrumentation for measurement of uh, voltages and currents okay and uh, in the next few lectures we will uh, next uh, one or two lectures we will look into uh, both the um, use of electronic instrument for uh, say measurement of resistance also okay in addition to digital instrumentation where you don't even go into the representing the signal as an analog signal rather as a digital signal because there are certain advantages of uh, storing your display digitally uh, most particularly in in communication transmission of that sort okay so let's go into these things so okay so why what is the uh motivation behind using elect and going going for electronic instrumentation more particularly so if you have if you are measuring a very low voltage let us say something that itself is in millivolt range and let us say there's a dc i uh, have written it in ac source so let's say that you have a a dc voltage v that is in the millivolt range okay and since a dc voltage you have a pmmc meter here okay this has a resistance some rm and since it's a volt meter the traditional volt meter will have a resistance rs okay so the current that is flowing through this meter is im should be v by rs plus rm okay now since if v itself is very small and in a voltmeter you generally have rs to be quite large what this would mean is that typically the im that you get up may be too feeble too low for a measurement for a practically measurement to register okay on the other hand uh, you also don't want the meter to load the circuit so what you want is that you don't want to increase you to see r uh, so you want okay you want the meter current to increase but v by r okay should be small sorry not we have to be uh, yeah so you want yeah you want you want the current drawn from the uh, source from whatever is the um, 
quantity being measured, whatever is the circuit being measured, you want V by R of that to be quite small. Okay. However, you want I m to increase. Okay. And this seems as if a require the requirement is that you need to amplify the current and hence you can use an emitter follower amplifier for this case. Okay. And the concept is quite simple now. So if you are using an emitter follower amplifier, there is a pairs current IB that flows through this and however you are not measuring the current, you are not putting the meter here. Okay. What you are doing is you are, you are using an emitter follower and measuring the emitter current. Okay. And if you go, if you had, if you recall the amplifier circuitry, you would know that now the emitter current by the base current in this case would be beta plus one. Okay. Uh, now, which would be maybe something that is greater than 50 times. Okay. So, I by I B is I M by I B that is beta plus one. Okay. And uh, however, the effective resistance, so what I, what we wanted was that E by R, okay, should be very small. So you want a small IB, okay, or typically large RI, okay. So if you take E by IB, okay that is the effective resistance of this voltmeter circuitry then that would be much greater than rs plus rm okay because rs plus rm is um, sorry rs plus rm would be uh, this voltage that is v b e by i e this is RS plus RM. Okay. However, if we say that V B E is uh, quite small, okay, then you can say that this is the same as E. Sorry, uh, uh, yeah, V B E plus V E. You can ignore V B E, and you end up with E by I E. So. Uh, this as far as a meter is concerned this is the internal resistance of the meter of this circuitry okay what is about actually being used but effectively what you are doing is that you are using your from the for the circuit that is being measured what it sees is that for a current drawn IB and a voltage E Okay, you are getting some reading. Okay, that would mean that effectively the internal resistance of this meter Ri, okay, is E by IB, which is much greater than this RS plus RM that is being used. Okay, so we are able to increase the current that goes through the PMMC part of the meter. Okay while limiting the current that is drawn from the measuring circuit. Okay. However, there is one thing that this VBE was ignored. Okay. We assume that this is a relatively small voltage, but that may not be true in all cases, particularly in the cases when you are saying that the uh, voltage to be measured is a small quantity okay now this can be compensated by using a dual polarity supply and using this as a circuit okay uh, so there is a adjustment here and this adjustment adjustable resistance r5 is used to compensate for the for this vbk let's see how that is uh, done okay so looking into the connection you see that q1 this voltage is 
<coughs> bias to ground through this resistance R1. And similarly, Q2 is uh, has an adjustable bias between VCC and minus VEE through, but it's it is using it is using an adjustable resistance R5 and fixed resistance R4. This is because the compensation that is needed is only for VBE. I don't I don't want to change this potential. I'm not interested in changing the potential right from VCC to minus VE only only in a very small range. So in order to retain a fine tuning capability, okay, while being able to bridge this voltage VCC to minus VE, we are using instead of using one variable resistance, you use a small variable resistance R5 in series with two larger resistances R4 and R6. Okay, and this of course it will you'll be able to give a fine tune resistance. And again, both the emitters are connected to the negative supply minus VE through resistance R2 and R3. Now let's look at how this can be operated. Okay, now when you ground the input signal. Uh, what you should expect is that this meter there should be no current flowing through this meter however this is at some potential minus vbe okay now it should be made that this is also at the my uh, potential minus vbe okay and that can be done by adjusting the resistance r5 Okay, so this effectively would make that both these are in VBE when the input is zero. Okay, and more more so that this set the V E two is set as minus VBE one. Okay, and now whenever so so since the potential is changed now the reading that is displayed in the meter now would be it would effectively be the reading of ve so this would mean v would be uh, would become equal to e okay and in that way you can compensate for this uh, base to emitter bias Okay, and uh, because now we are talking about voltmeters, it may happen that not it may happen. It is required that the voltmeter has a high <coughs> input impedance, and and uh, it is better to use uh, fed devices as opposed to transistors because fed devices can provide you with higher input impedance when compared to transistors. Okay and uh, thus you can limit the amount of current that is drawn by the voltmeters okay i'm not going into uh, describing these uh, devices but anyway just as an indication instead of transistors you can use fed devices and have a stage that sort of increases the input impedance okay so coming to a different category of uh, devices you can use diode rectifiers in conjunction with the pmmc meter also okay now in this case you, you are not talking about dc measurement you are talking about ac measurement so you have a rectifier circuit that basically converts ac to something that looks like a dc <coughs> uh, but we have already seen that you have moving iron and uh, this electrodynamometer instruments that can actually uh, measure AC okay uh, however the sensitivity of the PMMC meter is much better than those of these devices so we can get most of both of world world both best of both worlds by having a rectifier circuit combined with a PMMC meter so you can measure AC while 
using a DC uh, measuring instrument. Okay, uh, let's see how this can be done. So you can have, so this is a full wave rectifier voltmeter. So since it's a voltmeter, there is a series resistance RS here. Okay, and you have a full wave rectifier here, full wave rectifier. The meter goes, is uh, it's basically a bridge rectifier and the meter is connected across this terminal. So you have diodes here, D1, D2, D3, D4 and you, you have an AC supply here. That's basically the construction. So during the positive half cycle, it goes from D1 through the meter to D4 and out. Okay, and in the negative half cycle, it goes the other way around. It goes to D3, through the meter, through D2, and then through the series resistance and out. Okay, effectively, what you get is a signal that is unidirectional. Okay, now, what will be the reading of the full view rectifier? Okay, we are using a PMMC meter and a PMMC meter generally settles at the as the average reading of whatever is the signal if the frequencies if the what you call if the supply frequency is high enough basically if the inertia of the uh, meter okay inertia, meter inertia is such that it is it it does it can't uh, follow the whatever is the AC signal that you have what you would have is that what you have as a reading is a reading that is almost the average of the signal okay now if you assume that the input is going to be sinusoidal waveform then the average can be given by this formula which is basically I am taking the modulus of the input waveform okay and uh, however I can take as twice of this twice of this average okay so that is 1 to pi 0 to pi vm sin omega t and that will turn out to be 2 vm by pi okay where vm is the maximum signal maximum amplitude and since we know that uh, VRMS in case of a sinusoidal waveform is Vm by square root of 2 what you end up as the ratio of the RMS value to the average value that is the form factor of this signal is being 1.11 so whatever is the reading of the PMMC meter Okay, that you multiply by 1.11, what you expect, what whatever is you get is VRMS. Okay, now what you what you do is that instead of actually calibrating this meter to whatever was the voltage across the meter, what you are going to calibrate is for 1.11 times that value so that this reading is VRMS. <laughs> Okay. Uh, now, is there is there anything any problem in this case? Okay. What we are thinking is that this meter current is simply the voltage okay meter current is the input voltage why am i doing this this is not okay this is your v okay the meter current is assumed to be uh, this voltage v divided by rs plus rm however what is being uh, forgotten or being ignored is that the voltage drop across these diodes and in at any point of time since they since they are two diodes that are active 
that are forward biased okay you are ignoring this minus 2 vd of i m okay and uh, since the diode is a basically a nonlinear device if the meter current is small or sorry if the current flowing through the diode basically is is small okay so if this i m is or if the not the uh, meter current the if the voltage across the diode is small then in those region we can't be sure of what the actual meter current is and what is the actual uh, voltage drop is okay because of this nonlinear relationship we don't know we are not really sure about this vd particularly when okay when the uh, current i is such that it is either less it, it is a current that is corresponding to the current of the cut in voltage or something less than that so it is not it is not significantly beyond so if it is not forward biased enough if the diode is not forward biased enough then you we end up in a situation that we are not really sure what is this drop across the diode and that in turn can cause error in the measurement okay so what is to be done is that we need to have a higher amount of current flowing through these diodes while limiting the current through the meter okay i don't want a lot of current flowing through the meter also okay so of course then that would mean that we need to have a shunt okay now this is a half wave rectifier and uh, so in one uh, the, let us say in the positive high cycle d1 conducts and the whatever the current that is coming in is split a larger part part goes through rsh okay and a smaller part goes through im so the current that is going through the diode is im plus ish okay uh, and during the negative half cycle we expect d1 not to conduct but just to be sure you have a diode d2 that completely bypasses the circuit okay however what we have here is that the yeah as it, as now the diode is biased properly much beyond the knee voltage okay and most of the current passes through the shunt resistance when the diode is forward biased okay but we are losing half the signal when you have the negative half cycle of the signal that is completely lost okay and that basically uh, affects the sensitivity of the meter okay of course that can be easily remedied by having a bridge rectifier so you can have you can mirror the shunt okay and have d1 and d2 both being forward biased for half the cycle and different resistances being in the shunt path during different part a different parts of the circuit okay now in the positive half cycle here d1 would conduct and the effective resistance would be rm and r2 in series that combination being in parallel with r1 and when d2 conducts in the negative half cycle you have r2 acting as a shunt and r1 and rm being parallel with one another or series with one another. r1 and rm being in series that combination is in shunt with r2 okay then okay so that was that was as far as this is concerned and now this is now a full wave rectifier oh no sorry a bridge rectifier however both in both the half cycles it can <coughs> it behaves like a half wave rectifier
okay and the uh, average value would be 2 pm by pi now sensitivity is is doubled okay so this is as far as uh, using the uh, diode based rectifier circuit as a voltmeter okay what if we want to measure currents okay these instruments cannot be used as AC ammeters. Okay, the reason for that is that you, for an ammeter, okay, an ammeter resistance is low. Okay, and so which would mean that the voltage across this meter, say VA, is also low. Okay, the ammeter resistance is low and you are not going to um, use this for very high current. So the meter current may be within a few milliamps okay, or at a maximum of a few amps. So the total voltage that you get across the meter is going to be low. And again, when there is a low voltage across this diode, it is going to again cause problems. Okay. So this limiter is limiting voltage drop typically would be less than the bias voltage of the diodes and that defeats the purpose. So some modification is required again. So this modification is now similar to the amplification that we had initially wanted um, and it was compensated by the amplifier circuit, uh, the emitter followed circuit. Okay. Now what we want is that we want to enhance the current. Okay. So again, now what was in the voltage part, voltmeter part, that has to be repeated here. So what we have here that we are measuring this circuit, we want to measure this current IP. Okay. So you use a current transformer here. And this IS is being fed to this meter. Okay. And since it's a current transformer, the turns ratio is less than one. So the secondary current to primary current would be greater than one, it will boost up the current and that will effectively make the diodes um, biased much beyond the knee voltage when they, whenever they are in operation. Okay. So finally, let us see a few factors that affect these uh, rectifier type instruments. Okay. One is the wave shape. So we are in the rectifier type instruments. What is being measured is the average value. But typically average value is not what is really desired from the uh, for most applications. What we have, what we need is either the maximum value or the RMS value. Okay. More so the RMS value, particularly in the AC circuits. Uh, if you have a reading, if you have a calibration, that is mostly the RMS value. So the calibration needs to be in RMS, okay? But the measurement is in average. So the calibration is possible only when you know the form factor of the waveform, or basically you know the shape of the waveform. And this form factor that we have talked about, we had this 1.1 that we have derived, that is mostly used in most instruments. Okay, that is widely valid only if the wave is sinusoidal or if you have additional circuitry that basically gives you the RMS value directly that you called as true RMS meters also. Okay, that is as far as the wave shape affecting the reading. Okay, the next thing was the rectifier resistance. So in particular scenario where the voltage in the uh, that is across the diode is really small then you have significant errors that may result from the non-linear voltage to current characteristics of the diode okay and by appropriate compensation circuit this can be uh, rectified but this is a factor that has to be taken into consideration you can't consider the diode to be ideal Okay. The third one is the temperature sensitivity of the circuit. 
your diode the diodes that are used used are uh, semiconductor devices so they have a negative temperature coefficient or resistance okay and this is actually a thing of concern okay uh, the reason for that is that let's say you have a diode and this acts as some basically it has at it gives some resistance okay now there is some current going through the circuit okay if by chance it happens so there are two scenarios here one is that you have a diode there is a resistance and there is an external factor of temperature affecting this resistance okay diode resistance and as the temperature increases okay the resistance of across the diode r is going to decrease okay so this is going to cause some error in the reading and to compensate for that you can have a series resistance in series with this diode okay of a material that has a positive temperature coefficient so that effectively both of these effects cancel out and you across these two terminals the resistance stays constant okay that is one thing okay so that that is one uh, motivation behind behind having a compensatory resistance the other one is a little more rare but it is something that you need to look into if you are having high currents okay so if the current is high they can heat up the circuit okay that would mean that this resistance across the diode rd this is getting affected how it is getting affected it is decreasing with temperature okay now if the resistance decreases that is going to mean that the effective resistance of the circuit is basically decreasing that will mean that this current increases again this increase of current is going to cause more heat which is going to bring down the diode resistance further so this is a runaway effect so that also needs to be prevented and but this is as i said this is a much more rarer scenario where you are dealing with high value currents okay however if it so happens that the currents are expected to be large then appropriate compensation is needed okay the third one is that no diode is going to be a perfect diode okay so this usually a practical diode can be modeled as a diode in 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 uh, c in sorry in parallel with a capacitor okay so at low frequencies this will behave like a diode no problem with that but as the frequency increases this capacitance the impedance of the capacitor is going to decrease so that will cause errors okay and that's why for high frequency measurement either you have a appropriate compensation or you may expect that there may be errors when you measure high frequency measurements okay so with that we come to the end of this particular lecture okay uh, you can look at chapter 20 of ak sony okay and also uh, chapter 6 section 2 of this book by helfrick and cooper okay on electronic instrumentation and measurement techniques <laughs> this is particularly for this <coughs> rectifier meters part of it okay then okay thank you for your patience we end the lecture here